please. <laughs> you can start, Vito. Thank you so much for coming. So good morning. Can you hear me? Good morning. I the first time I have to give a talk with a target in my in my chest. If you see, it's, it's uh, for the camera. Looks like if I move the camera, gets where I am. So yeah, very high tech. But uh, don't shoot, please don't shoot. I'm uh, I'm uh, was invited here uh, to give this first uh, opening talk as a teaser for you. Uh, what we're going to see along the week. I'm going to show. Uh, very briefly, very fast, some slides, and uh, just trying to warm you up for uh, the week. First, uh, I cannot start without thanking uh, EFT, UNESP, and uh, ECTP Cypher for uh, hosting us here and organizing uh, this event, uh, especially uh, the people you are going to meet uh, outside and some of those working in the backgrounds for uh, making the, the event possible. And most uh, especially, of course, for uh, Professor Farinaldo, who was uh, the one uh, organizing everything for, for the meeting. So thank you very much, Farinaldo, for proposing and organizing uh, the event. I start uh, always with uh, this picture, which is uh, the largest asset of uh, CTA, uh, which is the people working for CTA today. You can uh, see some of the faces you are going to recognize people in this picture and here in this room. It's a large number of people that has been working for over a decade now uh, to construct, to project, and uh, to run later the main data of uh, CTA. So what I'm going to show is basically some of the work, not all, but some of the work done by these people. As a teaser, I always start with this um, scales that uh, have energy, frequency, temperature, mass, and wavelengths, uh, all of them converted from the fundamental equations of uh, modern physics. And you see that uh, wavelengths uh, grows going down, uh, the other ones grows up. And you can choose here your preferred uh, scale to see uh, energy, frequency, temperature, mass, or wavelengths. But I, I did this scale very general, such as that everything that we study in nature fits in here. So it's a logarithmic scale that goes in energy from minus 10 to plus uh, 20. And you can see absolutely everything here, starting from uh, microphysics to uh, cosmology. And uh, within this scale, we have messages from uh, the skies. We have messages from the universe reaching us. Uh, this is a map of the sky in radio. This dashed line here shows the corresponding energy and uh, wavelengths. I just chose two of the two axes uh, in the previous slide. And this is how uh, the universe looks like in radio uh, with this, uh, this uh, energy and wave wavelengths. Going up in energy, this is the cosmic microwave background. You see the dashed line moving up. This is uh, visible light, if you could integrate uh, in a very high sensitivity with your eyes and the full sky. And then you get uh, ultraviolet, X-ray, and then you make a transition from what can be produced uh, from thermal interactions to non-thermal interactions. I'm showing here this transition very didactically, as, it's, as if it was a blueprint. Uh, from a thermal emission, from a non-thermal emission. Of course, it's not exactly like that. The transition is a little bit more smooth, depending on the process. But when you go uh, to the gamma ray sky, then you are certainly probing uh, non-thermal emission from different uh, objects. This uh, map uh, produced by the group of uh, Rodrigo Nemi, uh, Professor Rodrigo Nemi at uh, IAG, shows some of the TEV emission uh, some of the point-like source and some of the extend extended in our uh, galaxy. Uh, it's also highlighted here uh, the large Magellanic cloud, which I'm going to spend some uh, slides in the few uh, in a few minutes. But it doesn't stop there. As you are going to listen along this week, we have also a neutrino sky uh, with a very uh, 
brand new data that is coming with some correlation with uh, gamma ray in some cases. You are going to listen about that. So the sky is not really only light, not really only electromagnetic radiation, but also particles, neutrinos, charged particles. This is a map uh, from an observatory in the nor northern hemisphere where you can see only uh, part of the sky. And uh, the map of charged particles from the cosmic, the Pierre Rougier Observatory, which is the largest energy uh, that uh, has been detected so, detected so far in a particle. But uh, besides the trans transition from non-thermal to thermal uh, uh, that we are interested, these two wave bands here that I'm showing is the highest energy radiation produced by the universe or available mm -hmm. in nature, which are the gamma rays that we received from the universe and the highest energy particles, so charged particles that we get uh, from the universe. If you want to study any extreme phenomena in the universe, you have to look from the extreme messages. This is the message I want to give to you with this uh, brief uh, introduction. You, you, if you want to study the largest mass, the most complicated phenomena of interactions producing extreme energy, you have to look for these two. Uh, highest energy messages. And that's what uh, CTA is going to do for the gamma ray astronomy. There are several techniques that uh, can probe gamma ray from the sky. You have the satellites, you have uh, this uh, wide field of view detectors that measure the particles uh, crossing them, also for gamma ray uh, primaries. And you have the image uh, telescopes like CTA is going to run. This is uh, the Magic Cherenkov telescope, as uh, I'm going to show. So CTA is based on the image technique, making images of the shower and uh, detecting uh, gamma ray events. This transition from different techniques is needed and very, very uh, good. It's needed because when you go higher in energy, the flux starts to go down. You cannot make uh, physics in satellites because they have a small area of collection. So you have to go to large area detectors that you cannot launch. So you make them on ground. But it's also very good because there is always an overlap of energy between the two techniques so that you can uh, cross calibrate and cross check uh, your results. So CTA uh, is built on the experience of previous experiments which have opened the field detected uh, hundreds of sources. They are uh, Veritas, Magic, uh, Hess, and Kangaroo. The three here, the pioneers of this uh, stereo technique with more than one telescope looking to the source. You're going to listen a lot about that, but the idea is that uh, a particle, a gamma ray, creates a shower. What the telescope, telescope sees is not the gamma ray entering the atmosphere, but the shower that develops in the atmosphere, this shower has very relativistic particles producing Cherenkov radiation. And uh, this Cherenkov radiation is what gives name uh, to CTA and to the technique. Uh, it's a light pool of uh, 120 or so uh, meters on, on ground. And that's the pool where you make your telescopes to detect them. The more telescopes you have, the better your measurement. And you detect, uh, you separate your gamma rays, which are the main target of these experiments, from your proton background by looking at the image of the shower. This is a simulation. So we know this is a photon. We know this is a proton. And you can see how the photon, how the gamma ray is more compact and uh, developing in a more organized way, in a, in a very smooth way, when compared to the proton primary uh, that has uh, high PT, so high transversal momentum interaction of the hadronic. Interactions happen here, giving these branches that uh, are not very hard to differentiate from a smooth uh, developing uh, shower. Most of what uh, uh, is going to be said uh, here today is a development of this first book that was published uh, some years ago called Science with the Cherenkov Telescope Array. And uh, it summarizes the physics, uh, the astrophysics that uh, CTA wants to do, that the consortium wants to do, which is summarized again in this sentence and view the extremes uh, of the universe. You can download it uh, for free. 
and uh, the consortium has been improving the science, it has been improving the, the plot uh, shown here since then, as you are going to see by the experts along uh, this week. This is a move I like very much. I did it in my own way that shows uh, CTA, Sky, and uh, sources. So this is an animation uh, of what I suppose is a, a black hole accreting mass and making a jet. But it's on an animation to show the gamma ray being produced, traveling to Earth, producing this air shower in the atmosphere by interacting uh, with uh, the molecules of the air in the atmosphere. This shower makes this pool of light, sharing of light, that uh, flashes the telescopes. You have uh, the telescopes on ground based on a large mirror, a large collector, one camera that uh, detects, really detects the light. So the mirror just reflects uh, the light to the camera which is here, and this is transformed then in electronic signal. Uh, very fast cameras. Uh, nanosecond resolution, uh, about of nanosecond resolution, and very fine pixel sizes that uh, can make the image of this shower available to the people analyzing. So each telescope has its own image that can be put together and analyzed uh, in a single way uh, to detect uh, the event. Teles CTA is going to have three types of telescopes, three sizes of telescopes, the large ones, the middle-sized ones, and the small ones. We are not very creative in inventing names. We leave our creativity for science because we just call the large one, large one, the middle one, middle one, and the small one, small one. And they are going to operate together in two sites. Uh, it's going to be really a Hollywood image to see all of these telescopes uh, moving together. If you have been close to at least one of them, you are already impressed. I cannot imagine how it's going to be in La Palma and in Chile, where they are going to work, when you have uh, dozens of them uh, moving together to detect a source. So these are the two sites selected to host uh, CTA. Uh, very different from each other. The Atacama Desert, as you can see, very dry, very flat and large area. Uh, it's close to the optical ob observatories, but not uh, uh, in the same mountain. And in Chile, uh, in, the, in La Palma, sorry, it's a mountain, it's humid, but as it was shown very briefly there, the telescopes are above the layer of clouds, so there is no problem to be uh, close to the scene. So CTA targets are very briefly to improve the sensitivity in one order of magnitude compared to the experiments running now, to make it wider in energy so that we can measure a large uh, interval of energy with only one observatory, so same systematics running in, this, in the energy range, increase the field of view, improve the angular resolution to about one uh, magnitude lower than uh, the sensitivity, than the, the resolutions we have now, and have a flexibility in operation. So these are the sites. The arrays in the north and in the south are not going to have the same configuration. This is due to two reasons, basically. One is scientific, because we have at the galactic center very uh, much available in the southern uh, site, so we can uh, target the southern site to, ma to make galactic uh, science. But also uh, budget uh, reasons that uh, limit the number of telescopes in some of uh, the sites, but uh, not damaging the science proposal, which is uh, to have the galactic science done by the southern uh, site. These are the telescopes. So this is the large size telescope already running in, in La Palma. So CTA is not a, a promise, it's a reality. That we have one telescope of CTA on site running. The other telescopes, have been uh, built, but uh, as prototypes, and they are not uh, in the site yet, but they are coming soon uh, in the next year, starting to be on site. So this is the, the official, if I can say, middle-sized telescope. This is an alternative proposal from our uh, American uh, collaborators, which has also a dual mirror, just like the technique of the small size telescope running a uh, dual mirror with some uh, different properties from the single mirror telescopes that I bet is going to be explored along uh, the week. 
YCTA need uh, three types of telescopes is to cover the uh, wide energy range with uh, a good uh, resolution and sensitivity. If you think of the, the low energy uh, showers, the low energy events, they produce, uh, they're dim. They don't produce too much light. So to measure something that is dim, that is not very bright, you need a large mirror, right? But these low energy showers, they are abundant. There are a lot of, lots of events coming because they are low energy. So because we have a, a lots of them, you don't need a large collection area. You can make a small collection area, but each collector of you, of you are going to use, needs to have a large mirror because the light is not very, uh, not too much light to measure. So what you do, you, made, you make very large telescopes in a very small area. If you increase the energy, with these two arguments, you can see why we have middle-sized telescopes in the intermediate area. Because in the intermediate energy, the showers are, have more or less uh, the, the average of, uh, of light. And the spectrum, the energy spectrum, is, the flux is not too much low. So you can have a, an area coverage that is intermediate. And for the highest energy, then you need, you don't need to, uh, a big mirror, because for the highest energy, you produce lots of light for each event. But you don't have many events arriving, so you will spray lots of telescopes in a wide uh, uh, area on, on ground to get as many events as you can. So this is the reason why CTA has three telescopes types uh, with different size and different uh, configurations uh, on ground. Another uh, possibility that CTA will run, uh, given that you have uh, many telescopes, is that uh, you can run a survey mode. This, each circle here represents the field of view of one uh, telescope. You can place one telescope next to the other and then run a survey of a large area and not very deep. But you can also choose one point in the sky, for instance, where you can make a very deep, you want to make a very deep measurement of a very dim source, very far away. And then you point all telescopes to the same uh, position and you have a very uh, dim, uh, very deep uh, measurement. And you can also skip one or two telescopes, for instance, in a monitoring mode of some uh, interesting source that uh, might be flaring or that you are waiting to see if something happens, but you don't want to spend all your telescopes in just this source, so you make one telescope there and wait for something interesting to happen. Then you immediately point all of them uh, to this place. So this flexibility of operation is something CTA is going to have for the first time comparing to the current uh, experiments. This is the sensitivity of CTA as a function of energy. So the sensitivity is the smallest amount of light you can measure, the smallest amount uh, of events that you can have with good statistics, with some statistics. And the points for CTA are shown here in these black points and these red points as simulated for the nor northern in black and southern arrays. In comparison with uh, the other experiments, you have a, a very uh, large mix of experiments here, including different techniques. So these are the satellite, Fermi lot. You can see there is a small overlap only in the lower energy range. In the higher energy range, you have an overlap uh, with the other technique, which are the tanks, just like Hawk, Lasso, and uh, SWGO. And you have here the, the current uh, image telescopes, so MAGIC has and Veritas, and showing that CTA is going to be at least one order of magnitude better uh, than, the, than these current uh, uh, experiments. The same applies for angular resolution. Uh, this is the CTA angular resolution comparing to the satellites, to the previous experiments, and to the wide field of view uh, detectors on the ground. So CTA is going to look at the sky with uh, lots of sources. I have to go a little bit faster. And this is a, a plot that was adapted from Holland and Weeks 2003 already that uh, my point of view is a very good way to look at the potentiality of CTA. So future here is CTA, and this is the current sensitivity, and these icebergs, they show 
in a cartoon way the emission of uh, each type of source, starting from galactic sources. So when you go to the right, you are increasing the distance and then going to very distant, uh, distant sources and showing the sum of the physics. Of course, this is not everything uh, that can be done, but some of the questions that uh, can be answered by measuring this data. And the idea here is that with the current experiments, we only see the tip of the iceberg. And with uh, CTA, we are going to see the full uh, mountain uh, down to its base. The consortium has selected the uh, 11 key science projects that are very well explained in this book. These are uh, the key science projects of uh, the CTA uh, consortium. You can see here galactic and extragalactic surveys, of course. But then you can see lots of other sources and fundamental physics that are going to be uh, done uh, with CTA, including, for instance, the dark matter that's going to be explored uh, this week, including observations of the Large Magellanic Cloud and connections with uh, cosmic ray acceleration, which is also going to be uh, explained to you in details. But uh, whenever you hear this uh, word, uh, key science, uh, remember that there are special projects that have been selected by the consortium to be ran with about 40% of the observational time. So CTA is going to be an open observatory as well. Uh, the consortium is going to run some uh, key science projects, but uh, the rest of the time is going to be open for anybody to make proposals and uh, get the data in a competitive format. Uh, this is just a comparison of what uh, HES can see of the galaxy and what CTA is going to be able to see. So it's the first time uh, that the galaxy is going to be seen in TEV energies. And uh, the number of uh, sources detected and studied is going to explode in some years of uh, operation of CTA. This plot, I bet you are going to see hundreds of times uh, along this week. So it's just the uh, average uh, cross-section as a function of the mass uh, of the dark matter. And there are several uh, estimations that CTA can go under this thermal limit uh, that uh, would be very important to rule out or to get uh, the particle. But uh, you are going to see that uh, in lots of details. Uh, I chose uh, to spend a little bit more time uh, with uh, the Large Magellanic Cloud because there is a special uh, context here. Uh, the Large Magellanic Cloud is uh, an obvious uh, target for, for CTA. It is here, uh, shown in the sky. And uh, it has a, a, a special context uh, to speak about the Large Magellanic Cloud here because one of uh, the, the main, one of the leaders of this work uh, was uh, Fabio Yoko and a former student of him, uh, Maria uh, Caterina, which uh, were here from uh, this institute. They joined CTA while uh, working here at uh, EFT. Uh, that was the, the first contact they got uh, with CTA. We had a meeting of CTA organized by Fabio here, and uh, then uh, Fabio moved to the University uh, of uh, Naples, and uh, he continued his work in CTA, uh, which led, uh, of course, with a group. He was one of the leaders, but uh, there was a group of people working together, which led to the construction of a beautiful paper that just uh, was just submitted, but I think it's not in the archive. It's not in the archive, uh, France. Not in the archive, but it was just submitted to, to, to a journal, and you are going to be able to read uh, soon. But uh, the Large Magellanic Cloud is uh, very close to us. It's a dwarf galaxy, uh, very close to us. And its uh, distance is very well known. Uh, it is a very active place. It harbors some of the extreme stellar objects. And uh, luckily for us, it's viewed face on, so that we can really uh, see the, the, everything happening. We don't see the projection uh, or only of the disk. And uh, it is where the supernova, the famous uh, supernova 1987A is. So it's a very uh, well-known place for astronomy with lots of interesting uh, objects. 
the very high energy gamma ray sky is really poor so far, exactly because the current experiments cannot uh, detect. Uh, there is one pulsar here seen by Hess, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, this work of the consortium made a complete study of the Large Magellanic Cloud. It's a model with uh, many, many different uh, kinds of uh, sources. This is a simulation of uh, what could be seen. It is, this is a plot of uh, how CTA would uh, point the telescopes with different uh, pointing patterns. And uh, from my point of view, it was uh, a work that shows the importance of uh, uh, of this preparation work done by the consortium, even before the data is available. We improved a lot our description of uh, the Large Magellanic Cloud because of this simulation, because of these models that uh, uh, have been prepared by the consortium. And this is what uh, a preview of what uh, CTA could see comparing to what is seen today uh, by the TV telescopes. So I have to go faster. Uh, so starting from the source, uh, we are going also to listen uh, something from uh, Manuel. Unfortunately, he could not arrive, but he's going to give his lectures online about the propagation. So CTA is going to study the source, but not only the source, it's going to get lots of information from this beam of uh, TV gamma rays from the pass from the source uh, to Earth. The universe is not empty, as uh, uh, some people imagine. It's full of uh, radiation and magnetic fields. So the beam is going to carry lots of this information to us. And this is also going to be analyzed, giving information about uh, the way, but also uh, giving us information about uh, the interactions, like the possibility to detect uh, axon-like uh, particles or uh, breaks of uh, the Lorentz invariance that can also be studied. I'm going to skip all of that because I, I used all my time already. I'm sure Manuel is going to, to talk about that. But uh, I wanted to finish only with uh, the schedule, which is not uh, the last one that I copied from the web page. Please check. But uh, just as a, as a reminder of uh, the very good collection of uh, speakers that we managed to have here, and uh, to highlight for you the opportunity that uh, you as a student, as a postdoc, as a young scientist is having here. We are going to have uh, uh, people speaking from theory of the sources. We are going to have people uh, speaking about the propagation of the wave. We are going to have uh, very good speakers uh, talking about the detection techniques and how to analyze all of this from source to the experiment to make sense uh, of uh, the data that CTA is going to, to produce. So it's an enormous opportunity we're going to have this week to have contact to this uh, best uh, of the world team of experts that uh, can uh, teach you how to join CTA. So the takeaway message is that the CTA is launching, but even prior, prior to launch, so even before launch, launching, CTA is making many important contributions, as I wanted to give an example with the Large Magellanic Cloud modeling, which has improved a lot even before we get the data. It's a great opportunity for young people, so uh, collaborators are welcome. Please talk to the people here, because uh, we need more human uh, resources, more clever people working for CTA, and enjoy the week. Thank you very much. <laughs>